Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Why is it every time I get... It always looks funnier when I'm... Uh... Anyways, so um, yeah, I hadn't shot a video in, gosh, like three or four weeks now. Um, spring, it looks like, is finally starting to hit here in Wyoming. Um, and so uh, I was getting the garden tilled and, you know, compost in there and getting a, a whole bunch of uh, uh, outside projects going. Plus, my wife got a, a couple of new batches of chicken, so we got a new chicken coop, or a, uh, an additional chicken coop. Um, it's just been a whole bunch of, uh, uh, you know, spring weather project stuff. And um, uh, got a couple of also uh, uh, exciting new lines of stuff coming out in the shop that you'll be seeing here in the next couple of weeks. It's been, you know, an awful lot of uh, work on those as well. But today is a new uh, microscope video day. So the other day, um, I thought, uh, you know, I was, I, was, I was hand sanding some knives, and, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever hand sanded a knife before, but, you know, you clamp up a, a blade here on the, the sanding stick, and you clamp it up, and then you grab these, uh, you know, little sanding sticks, which is just a piece of steel with sandpaper wrapped around it, and you sit there and you sand, um, you know, a, a, a finish on the blade. And that's how you get the nicest hand sanded type finishes. And it, it, it takes a long time and I thought, you know, I ought to get a shop TV. You know, remember in the old shop, you know, it was my, my attached two car garage. And so when I wanted to do a microscope video, I just ran downstairs and grabbed the spare TV and then, you know, brought it upstairs, put it on the bench, hooked it all up and away we went. Well, you know, I, I mean, this is a detached garage away from the house, and it's about 30 yards from the, from the house. And so I figured if I kept carrying that TV back and forth, sooner or later, the wind would catch it, and I'd, you know, drop it and break the thing. So I went and I got a new TV. Um, this is actually the old one. It's a 27-inch. But I went and I got a, a brand new TV. They didn't have a 27, so it was a choice between a 19 and a 32. So I got the 32, and of course it was a smart TV, and... Honestly, it was way smarter than I am because I tried hooking up the camera to it and uh, it just didn't work. It wouldn't do the live feed so that you can see, um, you know, whatever it is that this is seeing. So I'd have to snap a picture and then plug it in and then it would show just a picture. It wouldn't show the, the video. So anyway, so I, I took that one and I swapped it out with the other one. So my boy, he's got a, a, a larger TV for his games and, and whatever it is he does down there now. So, so now we've got this old system back up. So thinking about the first video that I wanted to shoot with this, um, you know, I wanted to show you something a little bit new. Um, and I think I've got it. Okay, so most of the time, you know, or up until today, I've always showed you the, uh, the edge like this, okay? So as if that microscope is looking down on the edge like this, right? And the, the reason for that is because, see the stand over here? Can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of sort of see it. Okay, so see the stand is, is fairly, you know, low. And so it'd be really tough to get a whole blade up underneath here to be able to see it. So I got to thinking about it, and what we've got today is we've got one of these little uh, husky um, lockback um, utility blade holders. And I took a utility blade, the one that was in it, and I ground off the, a little bit of the tip, about a quarter inch of it or so. So now we've got this nice flat... We got this nice flat spot, uh, you know, edge to look to look down on like this. All right, and <clears throat> we've got a clamp, you know, so that we can we can hold it in the upright position and then be able to see it on the TV. And yet, I've still got a handle that I can hold this blade with to be able to sharpen it. All right, so I'm going to take you start to finish sharpening this utility blade. Let's get you set up here. All right, so... I don't know how to get that red X off of there. <coughs> so we'll just pull it off to the side. Okay, so this bright line that you're seeing right here is, of course, the, the very top, you know, looking down... 
looking down on the edge like this, except for I ground off part of the edge so that it's nice and flat, right? And of course the edge is up, so right up here, up here is your edge, and then, you know, this is your cross section, right? Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, I mean, there's hardly any edge at all. I was going to get a fresh razor blade, uh, utility blade, but this is kind of what we're after anyhow, is seeing how they go from dull to sharp. Let's raise this up some. So we can get it back in adjustment so where we can see everything. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to see... Oh, there maybe. There's just a faint shadow of a little bit of an edge there, right? But not hardly anything at all. <coughs> so we're going to go ahead and fix that. So we're going to take this blade. And we are going to pop it into the little holder thing. Now remember, so one side's been ground off and the other side's still at a point. Okay, so that's how we'll know that it's the same side that we're working on all the time, right? Okay, so we got that. Now you got my bench stone here. This is just a, uh, a crystalline, uh, a Norton crystalline uh, combination course fine. And it just so happens that this one is the Giant or the JUM3. And I'll, um, I've been trying to put, put links, Amazon links, to some of this stuff so that uh, you'll know where to find it. Okay, so we're, uh, I'm gonna need a towel. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> and remember, we've got kind of the normal setup. You know, we've got, um, you lay a towel down on the, the bench top, and then you put your, your two by four on it, and then you put the towel back on it, and then you put the stone on it, and that way nothing moves around, right? Okay, so we're just gonna go, I mean, this isn't, well, you know, no, we can go ahead, we can go ahead and do the course side. That way you kind of see scratch patterns and everything from the top. All right, so let's put, and this is just mineral oil, which, you know, well, you guys have seen the mineral oil that I use. They sell it as butcher block oil, I buy it at a uh, local farm and ranch supply house um, by the gallon. Okay, so if we look back at that again, if you'll remember when, uh, you might have to rewind it a little bit, but this side had a pretty good angle on it, and this side didn't really have much of anything, all right? And that happens in normal freehand sharpening also. Unless I'm really um, concentrating on it, the angle coming to me will always be a shallower angle than the angle going away from me. Um, you know, everybody sharpens a little bit different. We're all freehanders, we're not robots. And honestly, it really just doesn't make all that much of a difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay the, uh, the, the razor blade flat, okay? Then we're gonna raise it up until I kinda sorta feel um, whatever bit of a bevel is there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and work it. because we need to remove quite a bit of material to establish a new edge bevel. But then again, this is also pretty soft steel. And so, heck, we are already there. So now I can pop this out. And then put it in our, our fancy blade holder here. Okay, set it down. Oh, we need to go off to the left a little bit. Yeah, this is this is pretty exciting to be able to show you all this. I guess I could just move move the blade holder around, huh? Okay. And that is just, okay, yeah, so you can barely see it. All right, so if you remember, the way this edge bevel was, 
was that we had a heck of a bevel on this side, but we had hardly any bevel at all on this side. Well, now we've got a, a you know a pretty good bevel established there, and sure hope you're going to be able to see that. You see that right there from that point up? That is the burr. Uh, maybe if I bring the TV in a little bit closer to you, huh? Yeah, there we go. We haven't worked this side at all. Uh, we haven't worked this side at all. Okay, we worked this side and we brought in this angle and see that right there? That is your burr. Okay, that is the toughest thing about knife sharpening is being a, because you can't, once you know what to look for, you can see this, but you can't see this this big. <coughs> Actually, back, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can zoom. Oh, I forgot all about zooming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Oh, this, oh, yeah, uh-huh. This is where it's at, right here. The whole zooming thing. <coughs> All right, let's get you back over here. All right, so this right here is the factory bevel. This is the bevel that we put on, and that right there is that burr. See how it's even got a, a little bit of that, um, uh, that's part of the blue paper towel that I wiped it off on before I put it up underneath here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this must be <clears throat> at slightly a different level. So when I ground the, the when I ground part of that tip off, when I ground part of this tip off, there must be like a little step right in there. Okay. Where'd we go? Yep. That right there, my friends, is the burr, okay? And that is little bitty bits. I bet you will even be able to see the blue. Uh, yeah, that right there is fibers from that, that paper towel. All right? <clears throat> so, now let's go ahead... Let's bring it back to about there, I would guess. We'll still have to focus ag again. Oh, well, before I move you. All right. <coughs> so we got most of our shaping done, right? I mean, we could bring, you know, I mean, if we were, you know, trying to create like the absolute perfect edge, okay, we could bring this, you know, we'd lay our edge angle down, uh, um, lay it down a little bit so that we would grind this farther back. All right, and we might do that, you know, just for fun sakes. We'll, um, we'll go ahead and go to the fine stone. We'll th lay this back some and see if we can't kind of even these, these bevels out a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and um, uh, grind on this side, and we'll be able to move that burr over here. So what we'll see the next time is that this should be farther back here, okay? And then this burr, instead of laid over like that, it should be laid over like this, all right? So let me we'll push you back some. Yeah, here we will pop our blade into the little fancy Dan holder. Okay, so we're going to switch over to the fine side. I'm going to lay it down flat. I'm going to pick it up to where I can feel where I was grinding. We're going to drop it back down some. And we're going to lay that shoulder back a little bit. Okay, and we did. Mm, by eye, that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and grind the other side a little bit.
Uh oh, I think our uh, uh, our camera just timed out. Okay, so, <coughs> oh, I forgot that that burr ought to be a little bit finer this time. Okay, so we'll grab that, wipe the old hands off, hit that button again. I didn't lay it back quite as far as what I thought I was going to, or as far as I thought I did. Okay. Bring it closer again. Okay. So see that right there? That is a thread off of that blue paper towel. All right. This here. See how you can see that burr laid over to the side right here? This, um, like I said, I didn't push the edge back as far as I thought I did. But honestly, I mean, absolutely perfect edge bevels. About the only way you're going to get that is with some sort of a jig. And honestly, I don't really think that it matters all that much. I have never once had a piece of rope or uh, a deer that I was dressing out or a piece of wood or anything complain that one of my edges was laid back farther on one side than it was on the other. Okay, it just doesn't happen. I mean, um, honestly, even in straight razors, that really doesn't matter all that much, even though there you have a guide. But if you're like uh, freehanding like a, a, a wedge straight razor, and so instead of using the, the spine as a guide, you're actually lifting up on it a little bit. It's still, I mean, they shave your face just fine. So anyway, so now we got, actually, let's see if we can't get it a little bit closer still. Oh, look at that. Look at that, would you? Okay, see how that, see, we can, re we can really see that burr now. Let's... <coughs> get even closer oh. there we go okay let's see where's my coffee at all right Okay, so we still got our, our burr, and this is still, that right there is actually still a, a, a thread from that, that paper towel. But you can see, um, now a lot of this stuff is oil, like this stuff right here is, uh, you know, the sharpening stone oil. <clears throat> but what you can kind of see here already is that burr is starting to, well, that's a, a, a thread from the, the towel. But you can see up in here, I mean, there's some oil and stuff in there, but you can kind of see that the edge is already starting to kind of sort of break down, all right? Um, steel can only support so fine of an edge before the edge starts coming apart, all right? Um, <clears throat> well, for this video, we're just going to leave it at that, all right? So what we need to do here next is go ahead and see how thick that burr is. All right, our future edge is actually going to stop right about here. Okay, um, so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and work this this burr. Now that we have the burr established and we made it go this way, now we made it go this way so that we know our two angles are meeting. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to weaken that burr and get it prepared for removal to expose the new edge, which will be somewhere right around in here. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do to do that is we're going to stay on this fine side of the, the Norton Crystalline, okay, 
and we're just going to go ahead and work both sides with lighter and lighter pressure moving that burr back and forth and the next time that we put it up underneath the scope that burr will be considerably thinner um, and I don't know which way will be you know which will which way it'll be pointing because I'm not sure where my last stroke is going to end up but <clears throat> the next step is going to be to get that burr considerably thinner and ready for removal all right so let's back out go to the sharpening stone oh good we still got a full battery there all right so let's pop that in there need the old coffee Okay, so that burr to my fingertip feels uh, like a fairly, I mean, a medium to a heavy type of burr, okay? So we just need to get that nice and light. Now you'll notice that I'm doing one stroke, maybe two strokes, and then one stroke here, and then one stroke, because it really, that's one of those things too, that unless you're, you know, trying to enter an, enter an edge competition or something, you know, then it really just doesn't matter. I mean, all you're trying to do is uh, reduce your pressure and get that burr to where it's in a, a state where it's ready to be removed. And around here, we don't enter edge competitions, okay? Around here, we sharpen knives, we use knives. Um, you know, most of my edges get wrecked by staples, rocks, dirt. Um, you know, in my mind, there's no sense in spending more than two or three minutes sharpening an edge anyway, unless you're showing somebody something like this. Because you make the edge to work with it. Okay. All right, there's the back of it. These higher magnifications, it gets a little bit fiddly. Okay, so this time we got quite a bit of well, quite a bit of that paper towel. So I just clean it off from my fingertips there. Where are we at? Come on. Well, where the heck is it? Ah, there it is. Okay. That's the part we're looking for. Okay. Somebody coming to visit. Nope. Okay, so <clears throat> so that looks quite a bit cleaner. Let's see if we can't get just a little bit more of the, the very burr. Let's bring it back some. Right there. Okay, now, I told you that burr was going to be a whole lot less, right? Okay, so, um, like I said, our future edge is going to be right about here now, okay? And this is what's left of that burr, all right? We've got one more step. 
what I've been playing with with these stones right here um, is uh, kind of a uh, a variation in between like normal sharpening and like a Murray Carter type technique okay so we've got our nice strong edge bevels here and we've got just a little bit of a burr I mean that's a pretty fine burr okay but we're gonna make it a little bit finer all right and then we'll we'll show it to you a little bit finer then we'll go ahead and remove it and we'll see the the final edge we will maybe shave some hair off my arm uh, you know and call it good okay Okay, so what we're going to do this time is called stone stropping. All right, now the idea behind stone stropping is that if you can imagine, okay, imagine that you are that tall, okay, and you are standing on the surface of this stone, right? and you're looking out across the stone as if you were looking out across the plains, all right? If you were to look out my window and see rolling hills and houses and all that kind of stuff, <coughs> all right? If you were that small and you were looking across the surface of this stone, little, you wouldn't see flat like glass, like a, <coughs> like a mountain lake with no wind, you know, on a, a just a clear summer night, you know, where I mean, uh, when the water is like glass and you can you can see the mosquitoes hovering above the water. And when the when they land, you can actually see ripples from that. The surface of the stone isn't going to look like that. The surface of the stone is going to look a lot more like. Um, like a like a boulder field okay so like the side of a mountain where um, you know the where it's had a rock slide and then take that and kind of turn it sideways so it'd be mostly kind of flat but there'll be you know big boulders here and little bitty boulders here and and it's gonna be you know kind of a jagged landscape is what the surface of this stone is gonna look like <coughs> so the idea behind stone stropping is that if you were to take that edge, or when you take the edge, and you push it across that boulder-infested landscape, the edge is con gonna constantly be hitting those boulders, okay? It might go for a little bit, and all of a sudden, bam, it hits a boulder, and then goes for a little bit, and then hits another boulder, all right? And so, those boulders are gonna impact your edge, all right? Now, this is gonna be on a microscopic level, I mean, no, not micro, well, You'd have to have a microscope to see it. I'm not too sure that this scope would be able to show it to you, but, but that's what happens. <clears throat> so what we do is you, instead of pushing the edge into those boulders, you pull the edge backwards over the boulders, okay? So on the flat spots, you get, you know, a nice abrasion, and then the edge rides up over those boulders, okay? Which it might cause a little bit of damage, but not like pushing into it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stone strop, well, I don't know, two or three or four times, however, you know, however many you feel like you need, um, to really smooth that burr out and get it ready for removal. Okay, and you'll be able to see how much the, the burr might actually be a little bit longer, but it should be thinner and more in line with the edge when we're done. Okay, so nice and light. And at the same angle that you were sharpening, I mean thereabouts, you know, within, I mean within a couple of degrees or five or however many you can hold. And we do two more. And this one's kind of at a funky angle because of the way the, you know, anyway. Okay, so we'll wipe it off with a towel. And then we might even palm strop it a couple of times to get that uh, those towel fibers off okay, and then we'll pop the blade out now we're trying there we go now we gotta find the thing again oh is that it there we go there we go Okay. Yep, 
it would probably be probably be best if I could put this in the exact same spot at the exact same angle each time but you know what uh, we're just gonna have to work with what we got here ah there all right where's the coffee you know I finally figured out what it was you know uh, you know since I quit smoking I don't really cough a whole lot um, until I get in front of this camera and what I got to thinking about is that I talk more in front of this camera I mean like I, I've, I've talked more in the last 30 minutes than I will the rest of the entire day so now check that burr out sound like Negan check that out you know Negan from The Walking Dead? Uh, look at that. We got nice strong bevels here and then see how fine that burr is? I mean that thing is just barely hanging on. Gosh, can we get you any closer to that? Or will it get fuzzy? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, look at that. Look how fine that burr is. I mean that's... Honestly, I, I couldn't feel that with my fingertips, okay? Typically speaking, your fingertips can feel, I mean, you can, you can pluck a, a hair from your head and you can feel that hair in between your fingertips, right? Most hairs are, you know, three to five thousandths of an inch thick. That was something that I couldn't quite feel with my fingertips, all right? Now, if I was to lay that over onto one side, I could definitely feel it with a fingertip. But in this position here, I couldn't feel it. Okay, so <clears throat> we have a couple of different options on getting rid of this burr, okay? We can, uh, I'll pull you back here, and then we'll grab this knife as an example, okay? So if we have that burr on this knife, okay, you can strop that, that edge back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, until you work, you bend that burr back and forth and you work hard in it and it breaks off, okay? That leaves a pretty ragged edge. You can um, lift the, the, the spine of the blade and shear the burr off with um, uh, higher, very light, high angle passes over the surface of the stone. That creates a micro bevel, okay, which is a very good edge. Um, and you can do that pretty well with one of these uh, uh, silicon carbide stones. What I've been playing around with lately is knocking that burr off in a piece of soft wood, which that's kind of like palm stropping it in that it rips that burr off. But then you come back and you stone strop a couple of times to repair the damage from ripping the burr off. Okay, that part is the um, part that I got from Murray Carter. Um, which he uses, uh, well, he used to use the King Waterstone the most, and that's a very soft stone. Um, it, it's fairly muddy, kind of like these uh, Norton Crystalline stones. And so that's the technique that we're going to try on this one, okay? So what we're going to do, and this part right here, I have never seen this. I mean, um, you and I are, are seeing this for the first time together, which is, which is also really cool. So when we go ahead and we're going to drag that edge through uh, just a piece of wood here on the bench, okay? I'm not even going to put it back on the stone. I'm just going to pull it off, drag that edge through the, the wood, and then put it back up. And what we'll see is that burr is going to be gone, okay? Um, I'm not sure if we're going to see any of the raggedness or not, because we're looking at the edge this way instead of this way, all right? Um, actually, we might take Take that. Take a look at it like that, though. <clears throat> Actually, no. So that you get to see, this here is a prime two by three. There's our edge. We're gonna drag it nice and lightly through that two by four. Okay. Now it comes finding it. There it is. There it is. All right. Now, but now that's that's kind of wild. It's still there. I would have figured that would have knocked it off. 
Okay, so let's drag it a little bit harder through there. Okay. Of course, I don't typically, I mean, I've been playing with this technique, but I don't typically uh, sharpen just a razor blade. Usually there's some mass, you know, behind the, you know, the weight of the knife pulling it through. palm strop at a time or two to get rid of whatever crazy stuff is on there that we're seeing. There we go and that little bit of burr is just still hanging on there. So maybe some more. Now we gotta find the thing again. There, okay. I'll be danged. I don't see if you're gonna be, uh, no, there it is, right there. Yeah, there is just a tiniest little bit of that burr that just keeps hanging on. Okay, well then we will go ahead and stone strop and I wonder if that's going to uh, remove that. Okay, let's put the, put the blade back in there. We are on the, yeah, we are on the fine side. Okay, now that's one of those. Yeah, I really can't. No, nope, maybe I can. Maybe I can just feel just a little bit of a hint of something there. That's about as fine an ink we're likely to get. Let's back it out here and test the edge first. Uh, Okay. Let's find a hairy patch on my arm there. This is probably likely to look cool. There. See, it's cutting the hairs. So it's nice and sharp. Now let's look. Man, now let's see. I mean, are we gonna, is some of that burr going to be hanging on there? Or is that just... And this thing right here is just not wanting to... Come on. Get out of there. It's stuck. Ah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's bring you in closer. Bring this in closer. And my pointer. Okay. So let's kind of tilt it up like that. Bring it back over to here. Alright, now we'll focus it in. 
Okay, so at that magnification, you can see we got a nice strong edge there, and you can see a little bit of jaggedness in there, which is, um, you know, the teeth that are left in the, the edge. Because this is still a 325 grit uh, edge, or three, 300 ish, I think. There we go. Now see there's, I don't see any burr there. That's a pretty clean looking edge right there. Yeah, now remember some of this, this is on the very top of the blade, so some of this is still sharpening oil. But right up there, we got a nice triangular edge going on. Let's bring this up just a little bit. And I think our, our blade is kind of, instead of being, well, uh, Yeah, here's a. Uh, uh, oh, I think what we're seeing here is that we're not. This is another uh, utility blade. I don't think we're straight like this. I think we're kind of canted like that a little bit because you can kind of see part of the bevel back there yep that's what it is and I think that right there is just a piece of uh, lint or paper towel left Yep, there it is. So that's a pretty strong looking edge to me. I mean, we got a nice, you know, triangular cross section. It comes up to a point. Yes. Why it's down here yawning at y'all's feet. Um, and it looks nice and clean. We don't have a huge burr coming up. We might have just a hint of one. Um, but, I mean, it was obviously sharp enough to take hair off my arm. So it's a pretty good looking edge. So now... <clears throat> Just to, um, just to kind of fool around here some, let's go ahead and look at this edge sideways. Uh, let's back us out some. Now i got to bring you down some more, mess with the scope. Okay. Okay, that right there is that little step that I was telling you about when I ground the um, ground the tip off. I didn't bring it all the way down to a point, or we wore you know rounded off the point a little bit while I was sharpening one where one thing or the other. So that could have been affecting us a little bit. Now let's zoom in. Drop it down even more. Right. Yeah, see. These right here, and that what that last little bit that we saw of might have been a burr, that could have just been our teeth. You know, because at the 
each one of these lines is a scratch that was left by one of the particles in the surface of that stone, right? So as those scratches run off the edge, there's going to be a, you know, a, a tooth. And we could have been seeing part of one of those. Yeah, that's more than likely what we were seeing. And that right there is a pretty nice looking 300 grit-ish um, edge. And we do still have just a little bit <clears throat> Uh, these pieces right here might actually be little bitty bits of the burr that didn't get knocked off uh, still. You got to remember these are, um, uh, you know, I mean these utility blades, I mean, you know, I mean they're, they're okay steel, but it's not like they're, you know, extremely fine grained or anything. I mean, you get you know, you get one of these things for like 20 bucks, I think, last time I saw, and that's a hundred of them, you know. So, um, honestly, not hardly anybody ever sharpens these things. <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're good steel, but they're not amazing. So, um, you know, it'll form a burr, and then a lot of times with more inexpensive steel like that, that burr will kind of tend to hang on a little bit. It won't release quite as clean as, uh, you know, a nice fine grain steel like 1095 or 52100 with a really nice heat treat. But anyway, so yeah, now you get to see these teeth in here. And you saw the cross section. Um, and so yeah, yeah, that is, honestly, I think that's a heck of an interesting video because um, that's probably the first one I've seen um, That's probably the first video That I've seen done on YouTube where instead of looking at the edge this way you got to see it straight on like that um, And I thought it was pretty dang cool of course this video is a little bit on the long side, but um like I said, you got to see it with me. Um, you know, this is the first time that I saw this looking down on the edge like this through this setup. <coughs> so anyway, so I'm pretty excited to have, you know, the shop TV, um, the one that actually works with the camera and the microscope and all that kind of stuff set up. So with a little bit of luck, I'll go ahead and start shooting some more videos like this. Um, you know, sharpening videos or, or looking at, you know, like breaks in, you know, like grain sizes inside of broken knives and stuff like that. Um, you know, and we'll just play around with it and have some fun. So again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Um, I'll try to go ahead and leave some links down in the description on the, uh, the Norton sharpening stone. And I think, you know, I can't remember where I got that scope, but it's an AM scope. And every time I post up a, a, a video with that scope, everybody wants to know where I, where I got it. And I don't remember, but I think Amazon sells it. So I'll post a link to that or, or you know, a, a model that's pretty close to it. So again, this is Joe Calton with Cal Cal Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope um, it made your sharpening, um, you know, make a little bit more sense. Uh, because the hardest part about sharpening is not being able to really see what you're doing and that's where this comes in So again, hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time